Hi, welcome back to the Pursuit of Truth. It's still the 19th of April 2018. Uh, I suppose I should declare all the clips that I'm using uh, from Sky News and wherever as fair use uh, for analysis. Just in case on YouTube they want to remove them. I suppose I should actually say that before, but I'm sure they don't actually listen to any of this stuff anymore. Um, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. I know I let the Bill Gates interview go on for its entirety. Um, but that was because he's, it was interesting to hear some of the things he was saying connected with some of the other subjects, the idea of charity, philanthropy, whether, you know, like he was saying jokingly a little bit, like that the, they shouldn't get paid 99% or 98.9% or whatever it is, should go to the good causes. But the thing is, like, all this money's going and it's still not, doesn't seem to be changing anything. Um, but it was interesting to see that at least he is, you know, uh, giving, I know it's only 1%, but still that out of his, uh, I assume if he owns over a billion or however much money Microsoft or him earns, uh, 1% is, is a huge amount of money. Um, so yeah, I can, I can, you know, that's it's great what he's doing. And let's hope by him doing it that other people with wealth will do the same thing. And this divide between the rich and the poor uh, won't need to exist anymore. I mean, that's why I was saying that it'd be, it'd be a good idea for all these people with wealth to know how much they actually need to live their life and do whatever they want to do. And that excess goes back into the pot so that we don't use money as a possession, we use money as a, as a tool, you know, because this money otherwise is just, if you think about it, that money is just sitting in a bank. Yeah, it's getting interest for that person, but there's people starving and there's things not being done that need money to, for them to proceed. How can you call yourself a member of the human race, you know? And like all these rock stars or whatever, all this money in the bank, you know, I'm a fan of uh, Paul McCartney. He has, was it 700 million or nearly a billion or whatever it is. And I know he does give money to charity, but if he gave what, if that, I mean, I know some of these things is because of what they're worth is not actually, actually how much money they have in the bank. But is there money in the bank that has been there for, for since the Beatles days that, or maybe not other Beatles, since Wings, that you know could go into good causes, you know that ten percent or whatever could change how many millions of people's lives, and if they all did it, if all these rock stars, all these businessmen, all these wealthy people that are making money out of us, put the money back in, so we we redefine what money is and how we use it. Anyway, that's going off the topic. So I was going to talk about, and that is uh, well, the first one actually is connected. It's um, life insurance. I saw an advert about life insurance and how that when you die you get 200,000 and sometimes when you work for an employment like I do, if I die in service my family will get X amount of money, like is it four times my salary. Um, that one's slightly different because you know, you're know you not actually paying anything into it but some of these, these insurance ones you, you, you pay like I don't know how much, £7, £10, whatever it is every month and it accumulates and they pay out all this money. And the thing is that I was thinking like you know when yeah, like if I was to die, uh, all the things that I can't do, all the things that my family can't do because of the society that we live in, because of the wage that I'm getting, because of how expensive everything is, and this is not just me, this is loads of people, this is millions and millions and millions, maybe even a billion people around the world are living in this situation. How, if I was to die, then all that money would come and that uh, everything that I can't do in my lifetime would be able to be achieved. Why can't we just give that money now? It's funny when you think of it that way, they have this money marked off because they're getting all this money all the time. And a lot of people outlive these policies or you know whatever happens or they put more money in than they ever get out. I know it's a simplified argument, but it was just the concept of it that you know if you gave it to me now, I could actually have a better life, but you'll give it to me when I'm dead. <laughs> that just sums up the way that life is on this planet and how screwed up it is. Just another example. And the other subject um, um, was about how, I think I mentioned this before about TV and how it's a lie and movies and stuff like that. And then uh, the other day it came to me the idea that, wait a minute, actually we get a lot of reality from television in the sense you get like reality programs and they're called reality programs 
Yeah, we all know that television is a lie, it's fabrication, it's people acting, yes, it's a contract that we make, you know, some people put it down as that we've agreed that we dispend disbelief, belief, whichever, dispend belief, yeah, and etc, 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 whatever your argument is, it is, it's still a lie, it's fabrication, it's not true, but you get reality TV, it uses this word reality, reality normally means something that's real, that's where the word comes from, but the fact is a lot of these shows are scripted, you know, uh, a lot of them are staged, so they're not really real at all, and the people on them are not really very real type figures. So it's another one of those lies, it's, it, you know, people watch reality television think it's reality, and it's not really reality at all. It's another lie in plain sight, not even hidden. <laughs> And the other thing is like, you know, where do we get a lot of our information? Like, where do we get how policemen operate, how you have a baby and all that stuff? It's all from television. So you're learning from fabrication. And then when you actually experience these things for yourself, you see how different it is. Like, you know, what I've seen a million films of, of, you know, when people have babies and whatever, and you always see like a room with loads of incubators in them and all the babies are situated in there and you're behind a glass. Uh, a glass door looking through at your baby and all the other babies that are there um, and I don't know if this is in uh, it's, it's still in America but in the UK there's nothing like that anymore the baby's with you all the time and I was thinking that was what it was going to be and through the process of, of, of pregnancy and this that and the other you know I was expecting when you did the first scan that you, you hear the noise of the baby and you know, you, all, these, all these, con uh, these ideas that I've seen in movies, and I thought, this is reality, this is how it is. And then when I actually experience actual reality, I see that these things are completely different. And that's just one aspect. So how many other aspects of television and film are we watching? We're, bring we're gaining our ideas of things. You know, it's like when you see about a detective or a police program, you see how they do things. But then when you actually get to reality, it's nothing like that. But we're actually learning, that's why I mean it is true that TV and film is, is a lie. We're actually learning things from these things of our real lives, thinking that they are, this is how they are. And then when we get out into the real world and we actually experience them, it's nothing like that. So what is that? That shows how you can easily be programmed. You can be part of reality, but not actually know it. Really, we're being programmed through this system, isn't it? Because it's not telling us the truth about even things that are meant to be real. That's something to think of. Anyway, that's enough for me today. Take care, take it easy, God bless and peace.